Welcome to another episode of Your Guide on Ghana. And today I'm really excited to be finally talking to Rashad McCrory here on my channel. He is an African-American entrepreneur and travel influencer. He is from Harlem, New York, and uh, he came to Ghana. Well, he's been coming to Ghana for years now, but it just so happened that last year he came to Ghana just before the pandemic and borders were closing around the world. And so much has developed over the last just over a year that you've been yeah, here. So yeah. I just wanted to sit down and have this conversation with him so he can share his experience and his journey. Thank you so much for taking out the time today. Oh, thank you for having me, Ivy. You're one of my favorites. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I love watching your content too. You're so raw and so authentic. For those of you who follow him on Instagram, your Instagram handle is simply Rashad McCrory. Yeah, Rashad underscore McCrory. Underscore McCrory. And he shares a lot of his journey on his stories and some of your IGTV videos and reels. And you can really see him getting into things here uh, in Ghana. So I want you to start off by telling us what you do um, and what brought you to Ghana in the first place. And then, you know, how things transpired as the pandemic hit and you decided to stay. Oh, great. Th again, <laughs> once again, thank you for having me, Ivy. It's truly an honor. You're doing amazing things. And I'm, thank and I'm you. very, I'm very happy. I'm very proud that I'm here today. Thank you. Um, you know, my name is Rashad McCrory, Africa Cross Culture. We take trips to various countries in Africa. You may have seen me on CNN, ABC World News, World Star Hip Hop, The Grill, Blavity, and many more. February 2020, I actually arrived in um, Ghana for a six March group trip. I brought four Americans to Ghana for six March, just to, just to tour the country for Ghana's Independence Day. And during the trip, we started hearing more and more news about the coronavirus vaccination spreading throughout the United States. And eventually it led to former President Donald Trump announcing a level four travel ban and telling all Americans abroad to come home or risk staying abroad indefinitely. When I finally began to really think about um, the magnitude of the announcement and the situation going on around the world, first thing I did was pray to my father who passed away two years ago. He's the one who introduced me to African spirituality and wanting to go back um, to visit Africa and learn about our African kings and queens. Um, he began teaching me at around five years old. Wow. About African spirituality. So that's that's me really at my root. I yeah. was always raised to want to go back to Africa and learn more about my history and heritage. So at this critical juncture in my life, he was the first person I turned to. Then I called my mother um, to ask her opinion. Um, shout out to my mom. Wonderful, wonderful woman. I love her so much. Um, she was actually very encouraging. I was more kind of telling her, like, so she wouldn't freak out. And she was like, yeah, you should do it, Rashad. I, you can, that's a great decision. I was surprised in that. Then I began to um, call a lot of my friends out in Ghana and mm -hmm. people I connected with over the years because, um, surprisingly, I, I've made a lot of good connections and, I, and, I, and I've been honorable in my business dealings here. So uh, when I began to call people in the different areas, in the different regions, um, people here have been very, were very encouraging with me about me staying. So ultimately, I decided to stay. Um, I stayed in Accra for three months. I stayed in Abri Botanical Gardens for about three months. And I've been living in um, Elmina of the Central Region by the Doors of No Return for um, almost a year now, mm -hmm. maybe about maybe about nine, ten months. What made you choose Elmina? Um, I got invited out there. I was supposed to just visit Elmina for about two weeks. I was just, you know, region hopping, spot yeah. hopping. You know, yeah. America was shut down, but Ghana wasn't really shut down. No, not really. I, I got we out. We only of had Accra. three weeks of lockdown. And I got out. I got out of Accra about two days before the lockdown was announced. That's when I moved into um, a brief botanical gardens. So like, I just, I was just ahead of the curve. I was on that that spiritual wave. Mm -hmm. um, I was just ahead of the curve, and um, I was just supposed to go there for two, for two, three weeks. Um, I wound up staying at One Africa Health Resort. Many blessings to One Africa Health Resort. And I loved the region so much. I was about 15 minute, 20 minute walk from Elmina Slave Dungeon, home, home of the door, no return. About a 20 minute drive from Cape Coast Slave Dungeon. Um, it was a very supportive black American um, community out there. A lot of elders out there. Um, and I said, you know, that two week trip, I wound up just staying for about three months. And then finally I said, you know, I need an apartment. I can't just be living in hotels and you know, yeah. I need, I'm, I'm gathering more stuff. I'm getting more luggage and things. So I finally got a place out there. It was a, that, that's an amazing experience um, with my place. And, um, and, and I just decided to stay. I was feeling more healthy. Um, story I've shared with you behind, behind the, behind the, behind the scenes. Um, I haven't seen winter 
in over a month. I left America February 2020. Over it's, a year. Over a year. I yeah. haven't seen, for the first time in my life, I, know, I haven't seen winter. Um, I don't even know if it's been a day under 65 in my life, <laughs> uh, in, in my last year and a half. I don't think so. Yeah, here, I don't no. think so. It's always hot. It's always hot. I'm sure one day by the by the ocean, by the Atlantic Ocean over there in Cape Coast and Elmina, it got a little chilly. But, yeah. um, you know, it's just been a wonderful experience. And, you know, I've been happy I've stayed. Nothing I've seen in the news in America has made me miss coming back. You know, I miss my family at times. I miss my friends. Um, you know, some of the issues here, whether it's Internet connections or just being up to date with the new technology. Like, I'm sure if I was in America, I would have a PS5 by now. Right. <laughs> you know, right, just little right. my, my new things like that. Yeah. You know, but what's a PS5 when you get sun every day? Coming from New York City, when you get sun every day, what's a PS5? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm happy. That's good. I'm glad to hear you're happy. Yeah. Um, and being a black man, I know a lot of people, and I, for me as well, I used to live in Canada, even though mm. I am Ghanaian. I was born in Ghana, but raised in Canada. So the majority of my life was there. So there's still, there definitely, there is that experience of being a black person. A lot of times you're the only person in the, in the room when you're in school. You might mm. be the only person in, in class and mm. they look at you for all the answers for all of black <laughs> people. And you're like, I don't have the answers for all black people. Mm. Um, or, you know, the racism you face with job searching, with mm -hmm. just everyday living, these little mm -hmm. microaggressions that happen. Yeah. Um, here, one of the things I find is I never think about being a black person. I just mm -hmm. th I just live as mm -hmm. a person mm -hmm. day to day. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a lot of uh, African-American people tell me that one of the things they love about being in Ghana is mm -hmm. that they never think about being black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you think about, too, when you're here? Yeah. Um Yes and no. No, I just wake up being a man here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, you know, in America, I live in Harlem. Um, even pre-gentrification, most of the places we eat most of the time is the Chinese store. You know, we go out to the Chinese store. You know, we go out to the Lebanese-owned um, corner stores. The 99-cent stores are owned by Indians. The supermarkets are owned by Europeans. Most of the workers in these in, 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 in other um neutral places are all bilingual um you know and this is in harlem this is inner city harlem and, and a lot of this was going on before full-blown gentrification um when i look back at the george floyd um killing last year i said you know i was under this under barack obama and eric garner that's what actually inspired me to really seriously take um being a human rights activist um even as we sit here today um june 17th it's a blessing that Juneteenth, two, which is which is two days away, right, three days 19th, away. The nineteenth. The nineteenth. Right? Today's yeah. the seventeenth or the sixteenth. Today's the seventeenth. Yeah, two days away. June Juneteenth, June nineteenth, um, when the, when the final slaves were freed in in Galveston, Texas, mm -hmm. in eighteen sixty five, is being made a national holiday. I heard about that. However, we still, you know, can't get an anti lynching bill passed. We still, um, they 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 erased critical race theory from. K through 12. Somebody told me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very controversial because people don't want to accept the re realization of institutionalized racism. You know, we deal with redlining, which is not being able to get good loans from the bank, from the banks or get right appraisal for our homes, education reform, environmental injustice, the prison industrial complex, police brutality. You know, we're focusing on police. We can't even get the George Floyd policing bill passed, you know, um, but... I'm happy Juneteenth is recognized as a national holiday, but we can't even teach Juneteenth in school. Like, how can you how can you have Juneteenth so as a national holiday? So they can't teach it. So they don't teach it in school. Um, a, a teacher would have to really make find, the effort to do it. Not not make the effort, but they would have to be selective with their words because if it's if it's if it crosses over into critical race theory, oh. they could get fined, fired. Oh. So how can you teach Juneteenth without teaching about racism? How can you teach about racism without talking about institu institutionalized, institutionalized racism without going into critical race theory? Right. In the same state, Texas, which already, it, these are symbolisms. Yeah. You know, I, I've sat here in Ghana and watched the election in November, and I heard how Milwaukee, Wisconsin delivered votes for um, Biden. Phoenix, Arizona, Nevada, Las Vegas, Atlanta, Georgia, um, Flint, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, Philadelphia. Um, these are all black cities, even even Phoenix and Nevada, which I mentioned. These are places where black people move and actually thrive. These are some of the places where some of the wealthiest black people in the world live. These are black cities that 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 delivered late for for, for Joe Biden, and we still can't get even the topic of reparations brought a serious 
looking to reparations, mm-hmm. you know, and I know many people have their um, opinions about that, but as black Americans, foundational black Americans, these are things that we take seriously as people who, who built the country. So things like that don't make remind me of why I don't miss America, you know, and I just wake up here and I'm just a man. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I, I don't miss it's it. It's a lot. Yeah. I don't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. So being here, um, tourism really, really has been affected over the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that affects your business. Yeah. So what have you been doing in the meantime to keep yourself busy? Are you getting into other kinds of business while you're here in Ghana? I've been doing virtual tours. I've been doing um, some journalism. I've been getting into small tours, but honestly, I'm sorry, um, small small business ventures, nothing, nothing substantial. I have a couple of taxis, a Yobas. Um, I just oh, started. Yeah? I just started NGO. I haven't even told you. Uh, I have an NGO now. I just okay. got my paperwork clear. Congratulations. Um, but that's fine. That's, 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 that's like a non-profit, not-for-government organization, um, not-for-profit, um, what they call internationally, NGO, look it up. And um, I'm actually starting a karate school. Oh. I found the teacher with You do some, karate? Yeah. My, my family's a black, all black belts in karate. My mom, Are you myself, a black belt? I'm a black belt in karate. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Secret. You wow. Know. So that's great. You're going to be yeah. teaching. Yeah. I found the teacher with his own school. Um, it just happened. Pretty much, I trained at, at Cape Coast Stadium. I trained okay. at the stadium, and I saw, like, some kids practicing in karate by themselves. And I recognized one of the one of the katas they was doing. I was like, oh, that's Heon Shodan. Where did y'all learn that? And then I started talking to them. They wound up practicing the same karate I practiced. They introduced me to their sensei. And then I said, ah, do divine order, something that's organically me, I can really invest in. So I'm working with them on get the, getting them, um, you know, geese, equipment, um, a, a additional spaces you know because they just work freely out in the stadium i don't know if i want them indoors Mm -hmm. or if i like the fact that they're able to work outdoors but we're ironing everything out um i've also been talking about investors who want to bring water to the country who want to do um training facilities in high altitude weather um tennis tennis programs i have a lot you know on 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 the agenda what's the name of the ngo if anybody wants to support the rashad mccrory foundation Okay. Um, with me, I love name brand. I'm brand. I'm the brand. I don't want to work no more. I don't want. I'm the brand. I'm the businessman. Okay. I'm the businessman. You know, <laughs> like, like, like Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything is branded under Rashad McCrory. Okay. So the Rashad McCrory Foundation. Okay. So yeah. if anybody wants to donate and support, would they go to your website to currently? Like, you... Um, currently the website is under construction. Okay. I have it under RashadMcCrory.com. I'm going to open up RashadMcCrory.org. Some people have sent um, donations via PayPal. Okay. Um, with the next steps that I'm looking to achieve in the very near future is opening up the 5013K in the U.S. and have people donate to the one in the U.S. so they can get their tax write-offs and things in order. Okay. And then we bring everything over here, you know, okay. so everybody wins. I'm about everybody winning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, so do you have any people who are coming to Ghana um, or people who have been inquiring what it's like? Yeah. You know, what do you tell them when they say they want to come here? Yeah. I tell them, um, I'm, I tell them blessings to you, blessings on your future journey, because um, even though starting in 2019, more people start to look at Ghana as, as another party spot, another um, tourist attraction. It's more than parties. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I still believe that it's a calling for many. I still believe the overwhelming majority of the people who come here, I'm talking about in the 90s percentile, um, it's still a calling for you. Um, when, when we talk about Cancun or Miami or Vegas or DR, people go there for just like extracurricular activities. And I, you know, the stereotypes about sex tourism, um, to Africa, but Ghana is still a place where, um, many of us are called. This Mm -hmm. is the home of the transatlantic slave trade. Many of us want to, um, many of us want to, 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 to learn our ancestors, to learn our history. Actually, the last time I saw you before today in this interview, we was at Antamanso Slave River. Yes, and, yes, um, and you were having a spiritual moment in the river. In the river. Yes. And what people don't, I got goosebumps, I wish I could show y'all. What people don't, what people don't remember, the same waters that were around since the beginning of time are the same waters that I hear. Waters just have three phases. It's the liquid phase, it's the solid phase, and it's the vapor phase, you know, the air phase. And it just recycles over and over again. So when you take baths in the spiritual river, when you're in the oceans, it has memories. And your, and, and your memories speak to you. The ancestors speak to you. Um, somebody videotaped me that day. I have, it on my, I have it on my Instagram and I have it on my YouTube. And then I saw how much coronavirus weight that I gained. And then 
and when I finally saw the video, I was like, oh, I got to lose this weight and get back in shape. I'm still, you know, I'm still, I've lost the coronavirus weight. I'm still going down in weight. Uh-huh. I'm still lifting more. But even that blessing, I believe that was a divine blessing for me to get back in the gym full time, maybe yeah. about a month or two after that. Um, because I, I, I really feel like I, I took a bath in the slave river. I honored my ancestors. And that was just one of the rewards that was given to me. Um, a, another story that I don't share with people um, not saying, not judging anybody, but I've never been an alcoholic. However, I, I did used to party. I used to drink and I, you know, would have casual drinks. Um, my third visit to Ghana in 2017, this was back before um, Terminal 3 was built. And we used to have to take a, um, a, 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 a what would you call it, a van, a coaster? Um, the van from one place to the other? Yeah, from the terminal to the, to the airport. Yeah. I forgot what you call it. Just yeah. when you have to take a little van from the, um, from the, from the terminal to the airport. And we had to walk up the steps going into the plane. Mm-hmm. And I remember I put my left foot on the first step. And then when I, put my, when I took my right foot off the ground, I felt the energy transfer. And, I, and for, for about a year, I wondered, did, was energy put into me or was something taken away from me? So later on that flight, I had a drink of um, white Merlot I, I, or red Merlot. It was one of them. Um, I haven't drank it so long now. And... Um, and then two weeks later, I was like, oh, I didn't drink in two weeks. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't drink in three months. Hey, let's see how long I can do this. And now it's been over four years since I had a drink. And then I realized, I was like, you know what? That, that, that was what it was. It was, it, was, it, was, it was the energy from the ground, you know, removing that from me. Because I had just really started my, my voyages. Again, mm-hmm. I started with African spirituality through my father when I was five years old. But I didn't make it to my first trip to Ghana until 2015. Right. You know, and this spiritual moment happened in 2017. Um, every time I come to Ghana, I just become a little bit more and more of a better person. In some cases like that, significantly more mm-hmm. of a better person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just, I've known that I've been living here over a year now. I know I've changed. I've seen my changes I, I see how I react to things differently. I'm, I'm continuing to evolve and grow. And I think many of us have spiritual blessings here waiting for us, especially those who are called. And I believe when you come to Africa, many of us, especially Ghana, um, still we, that, that, that window is still open where the majority of us are here on spiritual callings, especially black Americans. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing your journey and sharing that experience. Um, it's definitely um, spiritual for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who, for them, it might not be spiritual, but they want to come and see, and then it becomes spiritual. Yeah. So everything you're saying is so true from so many people that I've heard when they've mm-hmm. made the journey here. I, if anybody wants to follow you, where can they find you? Follow more of your journey as you continue your time here in Ghana, or if they want to do business with you. Okay. Um, you can you can find all my, I'm going to give you all my sites, but you can find all my information at my website, www.ghcrossculture.com. You can find me on Instagram, Rashad underscore McCrory. I like the hashtag Too Black Too Strong, T O O Black T O O Strong. Um, I'm verified on Instagram, so just find me with my blue check mark and my YouTube page, um, backslash Too Black Too Strong One Two Three T O O Black T O O Strong One Two Three. And what I try to do is I try to get people the good and the bad, the raw especially for diasporans and black Americans, what they can expect, um, things that a lot of people are, are, are afraid to say. I just say it raw, um, but it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Ivy, thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time today. Support thank you Ivy, so y'all. She's a very special woman. She's such a hard worker. Um, she's very gifted, and she's very well connected. She's very, very, very well connected. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget, if you like this video, to hit the like share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.